the AWS Financial Services Symposium, presented by The Cube. Welcome back, everyone, to theCUBE's coverage here in New York City. It's Tech Week. Everything's going on here in Generative AI. Is, it's a tsunami of applications and conversations. A lot of hype, but a lot of practical solutions are hitting the table. The Cube is generating the data. We're bringing it to you. Peter's back, CUBE alumni, Chief Strategist, Banking, Capital Markets, and Financial Service at Informatica. Great to have you on, CUBE alumni, going back to 2016. 2016, yeah. What's so interesting is that we've been covering Informatica um, since everything went private, and then now the, re the, the growth has just been phenomenal. Congratulations on all your business success. Thank you. Um, you guys are doing really well because the market needs your product. Absolutely. And there's no AI without data, and the data governance is like, everyone's working their hardest right now to nail that, to either put a foundation down or re-foundation their business yeah. with data. This is really what you guys are doing. I mean, the financial services, very competitive market. Data's at the center of it. People are gonna win. Some people are gonna win. Some people might not win if they don't get it right. Well, John, you know, I've been in, at Informatica for now 17 years, and I hate to say how long I've been in this industry, but I remember the days when you look at all the hype cycles yeah. that occurred, right, with big data, cloud, and obviously everyone's talking about AI and gen AI these days. You know, our, our point of view is that everyone's ready for AI, but your data's not. Your data has to be fit for business slash AI use. And the foundational requirements of making sure that your data is accessible, it's clean and trustworthy, it's valid, it's governed properly, understood by the business, and accessible to those who need it is critical in order to ensure that these investments that are happening around Gen AI to solve all the things that we're trying to do from a business standpoint actually performs and delivers business value. The challenge that we've seen, however, the industry has underinvested in modernizing their data management, their data governance, their master data management capabilities over the years, instead relying on human beings to solve the problem with legacy tools and custom-built processes, which doesn't scale. Yeah, and if you put the hype aside with the growth of startups and the, over, the big AI washing and the massive investments in, 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 in companies' um, valuations, put that aside. If you, if you look at the two concerns people have right now, it's the complexity of the tech stack and the unclear vendor landscape. Yeah. And that's just natural evolution. And, and so, okay, that's one concern, okay, what the tech stack will be. So there's a lot going on in the industry that the, the enterprises have to get right. Again, back to data. So that's why everyone's focusing on the data because they can't decide their tech stack until they get their data right because now there's too many tools. So what's your view on that? What's your reaction to the, to the current landscape and how are your customers kind of navigating those waters? Yeah, a great question. So if you think about the word data management, you break it down into sort of the core capabilities of data integration, data quality management, uh, data cataloging or metadata management, we used to call it back in the day, stewardship governance. You know, over the years in the financial services industry, companies have invested in one-off tools for specific project purposes or use cases. And what ended up happening in the industry is they've gathered a lot of technology, a lot of technology <laughs> depth that they have to then maintain, train people, hire people who know how to use it, obviously pay the maintenance yeah. to the vendors to support it. That is costing the business. And what's happening is those legacy tools cannot meet the demand and the requirements of today's time and period of cloud, digital, and AI that's really fueling, fueling excuse me, the growth of the financial services industry. It is a time to modernize and standardize, and that is where the opportunity that we see here at Informatica. Can you give a couple of examples? I think that's a key point, that there's some legacy stuff that's not going to make it. What Can you point to some examples that customers said, okay, I got to move off this now, because we're in a disruptive enablement market. It's enabling value, but it's disruption. People... There's going to be some things that are going to move that's going to be too old. Antiquated has got to move out of the way. What's, what's well, I'll example? just use Informatica as an example. So as you know, we, we started our business in the, uh, the market of helping organizations build data warehouses, ETL solutions, <laughs> right? Which were purposely designed for legacy relational database data warehouses, marts over the years. Uh, those technologies aren't able to keep up with the AWS ecosystems, the solutions that their partners are providing, they're not equipped to integrate, to cleanse, to curate the data. And so what we're seeing, unfortunately, is that companies are trying to use tools of the past for today's needs. It's not scaling, right? So what you end up happening is you end up creating a gap, a, a risk gap that has to be addressed. And the only way to do that is to, is to actually modernize your data management, your governance capabilities with technology that's available in the market today. Yeah, it's funny. I mean, we love, we're a media company, so we love hyperbole, the hype, and we like to feed the, feed the flames, fan the flames of, the, of generative AI. We truly believe it's a platform shift. And, and as we've been reporting, 
And at any time you have a platform shift of this magnitude, you can't go in and and half-ass it. You got to go in all in. And companies, you can't just play around. You got to change over. Um, and this has kind of been talked about the highest levels of CXO boardrooms. Mm-hmm. But now you get the bottoms up developer community that have, to have that are now using data as kind of a software element. Data is being programmed into the applications sure. because of the generative AI application. So the question for you is, how does the company get the value out of the gate? Okay, so we believe, yeah, people will have to shift, they'll have to go all in, or they'll be behind. But how do they get started? And, and, and given that's a hype cycle, all the efforts now is show me the beef. Yeah. Show me the meat on the bone. I want to see value. Where's the value? <clears throat> So the other hat that I wear here at Informatica, John, is I run our business value engineering team. So forget about the technology for a moment. What are you trying to achieve from a business standpoint? What's the measurable outcome that you can actually say, hey, this is what's going to be really important for the company. And then understand what do we need solutions wise to help deliver that value. And and today everyone's talking about Gen AI. AI, as you know, has been around for years in financial services. Next question is what data do we need to help build, train, and deploy those models to deliver business success, but it starts with the business outcomes because nowadays, as much as tech budgets are going up, companies aren't spending money on the things that they hope people will come and use. There has to be a defined business problem to solve. You have to start there before you look at where you're gonna be investing, what you're gonna be investing in more importantly, and why you're investing. So that's the recommendation that we have for our clients, which is what's the measurable business outcome? And let's start from there. And that's gonna help drive the conversation uh, for the holistic solutions that companies need. It's exactly like the application market. We have tons of SaaS apps. Workloads are well understood. Apps are out there already, yeah. but they're not been modernized with Gen AI and different data models are coming in. So we know there's going to be a retrofit of existing workloads, which are scoped, by the way. They're running on cloud or on-prem. They got to have maybe do some extra compute, but then there's going to be the net new workloads. So I have to ask you, if you look at the net new workloads and if data is the, the new killer app for this enablement, a lot of companies have like, I bought this company over here, they have acquisitions, they have multiple departments, so they have all this data scattered around mm-hmm. for the multinational big enterprises or just people who just haven't been really paying attention to unifying their data. What what do you say to those those companies? Because there's a lot of them out there that have all kinds of you know silos. Oh, you're absolutely right. I mean, the industry is obviously have gone and is going through a consolidation, yeah. right? We expect yeah. M&A activities to occur pretty rapidly in the next three to five years. It starts with cataloging and inventory. What data do you have? Because you can't begin consolidating, migrating, or retiring data unless you actually know what you have, where it comes from, how is it used? And that's a governance problem, right? A governance problem that is supported yeah. by proper solutions for cataloging that metadata and providing the stewardship capabilities, and more importantly, downstream, ensuring that the business users have access to the answers to the data questions. Otherwise, those are all really tough questions to answer. What do we do with our data? Well, what do we have? Can we trust it? What do we use it for? And as we talked about earlier, that's a governance problem that the industry must not ignore going forward. So I, I think governance is the hottest thing right now, looking at everyone who's out there. All right, so what's the, what, what's the outlook now? What are you seeing from customers? What are you hearing? What are some of the um, wins that you're seeing people knock down out of the gate as they go through this journey, yeah. putting that data foundation down? Well. We're here at this conference with with our friends at AWS. Everyone is talking about Gen AI, right? Right. And so you think about all the other big trends that happen, digital transformation, cloud modernization, big data still lingers, it's getting bigger every day. The demand for fit for business use data is growing exponentially. The ability to actually deliver fit for business use data for these investments relies on smart people and good technology. The problem that we see in the financial services industry is companies are really good at throwing bodies at the problem, but the supply of skilled labor in these areas of data management and governance is not growing. It's not actually able to fulfill that need. And so for Informatica, the big wins for us is we've been investing in AI and machine learning through in our own platform called Claire to provide co-pilot capabilities, but we're also leveraging large language models to basically do the work for the data professional where in the past, you'd have to learn how to use our technology. Now with Claire, we're actually doing it for them. So we're very bullish and we're, we're really excited about the opportunity, not just to meet the current requirements with Gen AI, but what's next in the industry and helping our customers be prepared for that next wave. Do you think that opens up more users to the platforms if you take away some of those nuanced features mm-hmm. with Claire? 
and the AI piece. It does, because what it does, it you know, we, the term democratizing data management governance to more the mid and front office, it allows the business organizations to get more involved directly in helping manage, curate, govern the data versus just relying on specific groups and people within a particular part of the organization by democratizing data management and data governance through capabilities that Informatica is delivering. It helps reduce the cost and the ownership while at the same time reducing the risk of not getting it right because of the investments that we're making in AI. Peter, talk about the relationship with AWS. Where is it at? Give an update. Absolutely. So Informatica and AWS, we've been strategic partners for for a long time, over a decade now. Informatica's technology is actually available on the AWS marketplace. We're helping our mutual customers get more value out of the investments that they're making with AWS, whether it's S3, Redshift, whether it's Bedrock, and all the things that are happening. Again, it's rubbish in, rubbish out. So what we're ensuring is that the data is fit for their AWS investments. And that's the partnership that we've been... Equally successful in the marketplace, but more important, there's so much more of it we can be doing, and we're really excited about the future. I heard you guys have a really strong marketplace presence, and sales is rolling in, the cash wrench is ringing up all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you, John. <laughs> I want to get talk about strategy for a second, because you're the chief strategist. Yeah. So capital markets, all the areas you're in, data is the product. Basically, cool. We had S&P on earlier. They're doing this implementation. They're providing more products to their customers. They're actually turning uh, in their own little marketplaces, yeah. data marketplaces, data connections that so people are sharing. Are these m- customers becoming product managers with their data? Is data now the product? Has it always been the product or has it been an ingredient? Now you've got, you're doing all the governance and cataloging, making all the management work, but now it's a product. Well, it's interesting, right? We, we had the conversation around data being an asset, yeah. right? Versus data just being a byproduct of a transaction and or interaction. Data being a product, now you think about it, whether you're in financial services or in the consumer goods business, products have to be, number one, in demand. Number two, it has to be designed and fit for downstream consumption and use by your customers or your employees. Like any product, it has to be curated, it has to be governed, it has to be cared for. In financial services, we've seen technology being sort of the competitive differ- differentiator in the marketplace, and we've seen the big firms are yeah. invest. Technology is a commodity. The data and the information that's derived from it to help fuel business growth and to keep customers engaged and, and, and obviously employees employed is what's going to help drive differentiation in the marketplace. And delivering data as a product yeah. is not a one-time thing. It's an ongoing thing. So the investments around data management governance is, is going to be critical going forward. And you guys are going to be a key part of that as data becomes the ingredient and the blood fl- supply, if you will, for the applications. Final question for you is what is Informatica doing on your side mm-hmm. to keep the customers confident that you're going to have that pace of performance as you become more horizontally scalable across pretty much all applications? Yeah, so we've got about to keep delivering the goods. Yeah, you know, so we, we have 30 years in the industry, Informatica. The first 20 years, we were selling traditional enterprise software solutions. You installed it on your own hardware, yeah. et cetera. We launched the Informatica Intelligent Data Management Cloud about seven years ago. And the goal of it was not only to just replace our old product, we still support those yeah. old products, to provide innovation for the future. And what we're doing now is ensuring that the investments that we're making in R&D to make our cloud platform if not equal, but better than our old products. And we've seen this given the fact that the analysts are recognizing us as a leader in those various magic quadrants of data integration, data quality, master data management, not on the old products, but on the new platform. So we're pretty happy about that as well. That was a good bet, by the way, and the subscription on that cloud was a really good bet. It, 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 that's where the industry was going. And we had to be there. Where the next bet's coming? What's the next bet? I, I think the next <laughs> bet is, is really ensuring that AI continues to really help provide the productivity and the scalability that our customers demand from their data management teams where you're no longer just relying on human beings because again, the supply of skilled labor, they're not teaching this stuff in in the universities anymore. So this is where AI, machine learning and natural language processing really helps scale. But we need to ensure that it's done right, it's done carefully, and it's done in a transparent way. So we're uh, really excited about what the future holds for Informatica and it's, our customers. It's, you guys, you're just in a great spot because everything's now revolving around security, transparency, explainability. Mm-hmm. All these things that were like nerd data conversations are now mainstream. I was on a, an event. They actually used the word data supply chain on the keynote. Like, yeah, 
what the hell's going on here? I mean, you're talking about supply chain of data, not lineage that's been around for a while, but like, where's this data coming from? That's a security compliance slash conversation. So that question is fundamental to the conversations we're having with, with our customers, not just in the technology organizations, but can I trust the data? Where does it come from? How do we use it? Where should we not use it? Is it protected? Who has access to it? And more importantly, is it accessible to the systems and applications, including all of these new Gen, I, Gen AI solutions? <laughs> is it available when we need it most? And those are fundamental questions, not just technology people can answer, but what the business people really care about. Yeah, and data quality with AI helping understand oh. how pure the data is. Has it been mangled too much, overused? And, and that's going to come down to trust, the trust aspect of this. Again, it's again all new conversations going mainstream. This used to be like informatical world conversation. Yeah, hey, yeah, we're loving it. Now this is application developers, software bill of materials. We've got that now. What about, do we have the data bill of materials? What's the, what's the, you, the fresh date on this thing? I, I think, so you know, we've seen these conversations literally happening for three decades now with the hype and the interest around Gen AI and the business now saying, wow, this is going to help provide a competitive differentiation for the organizations. They understand that building, training, and deploying AI models depends on having data that's fit for business and AI use. And if you don't, then yeah. why are we spending all this money here if we don't have the foundation in order to support that? And that's, I think, where you know the business relies on having good, proper data, but more yeah. importantly, powered not just by people and process, but technology that can scale. Well, Peter, great to have you. And congratulations to the team, Telemit and the folks. Um, we wish them the best and continued success. And the world spun in your direction and you're, <laughs> you're, in, you're in the good position. Congratulations. Great. Thank you. Thanks for coming Thank on. Yep. Okay. The Cube here, getting all the data here. We'll be back after this short break.